third week hit some light bulb went off. And I remember we celebrated you had, you had sold $700,000 using the core story framework and we were all excited. And then the next week you closed another 248,000. Then we celebrated that again. And here we are a month out from the core story bootcamp and you've generated $8.4 million. Becoming a master is not about doing 4,000 things. It's about doing 12 things 4,000 times. The Ultimate Sales Machine presents the CEO Mastery Show for entrepreneurs looking to grow faster, better, smarter. If you would like to have a profound breakthrough in your business, talk to our team live by visiting chetholmes.com forward slash breakthrough. Good advice is contextual. Get your answers at chetholmes.com forward slash breakthrough. Welcome everybody, Amanda Holmes here, CEO of Chet Holmes International, and it is my pleasure to introduce you to Troy Aberly. Troy Aberly joined our Core Story Bootcamp and it's been amazing to watch your transformation. I'm so glad we have it on video, Troy, because we are going to have to pull back and show this because the first couple of weeks you had joined into the bootcamp and you looked a little bit confused. There was a bit of confusion happening and as the third week hit, some light bulb went off. And I remember we celebrated you had, you had sold $700,000 uh, using the core story framework and we were all excited. And then the next week you closed another 248,000. Then we celebrated that again. And here we are a month out from the core story bootcamp and you've generated $8.4 million from the core story framework, which we all want to know, what are you doing? This is amazing. It's great to see the transformation, but then also that, I mean, can we go a little bit before we get into that? Can we go can you just give a bit of background on you and what you do? For sure. No, thank you. I'm super excited to be here. And I appreciate the opportunity to be able to share and give back to something that I know works really, really well. And yeah, so for what I do is uh, for this particular project, like I'm a life and business strategist, but I also work with businesses to be able to help them, you know, get clarity on what it is that their goal is and what are the actual habits and strategies that they need to put together to be able to create profit and, and the results that they want. Uh, for themselves and their clients. And, and, the and the reason why they listen to you is because I know for John Deere, right, you've sold four, over $400 million worth of uh, equipment. Their services, equipment, right? Services, and and yeah. that made you somewhere around the top 10 most successful reps in the nation or... Yeah. So actually in 2017, I did get the award for the most profitable salesperson in North America. Wow. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So it was, uh, it was a huge honor and, uh, you know, and I owe a lot of, uh, all of it to, to your father, Chet. And, uh, because it's really using those strategies and, you know, like you brought up that there was confusion and I think there's confusion of how, you know, I was switching from going from sales, but into a consultative role because the company I worked for, um, at the time as a salesperson, I now do, you know, consulting contract work. And, uh, and so it's, it's a huge honor to be able to recalibrate kind of where I was going. And I kept feeling like there was a bit of a pull and lack of direction of what I was doing, but then really go back in and actually just teach exactly what it is that I did, but prove it by implementing it with uh, individual salespeople. And so, um, you know, I love being able to go into a company and figuring it out, you know, what is that core story and what, what is the result you want? What does your client need? Uh, what do they want? And put the whole journey together and, uh, and create the magic. So, that's and with thought. the Dream 100, you're such a great advocate for Dream 100 as well. So it's a good one-two punch. Yeah. Uh, I know you had also shared with me that so an average rep for this particular company that you assisted to generate the 8.4 mil, uh, the average rep will, set, will sell between six to eight million dollars within a year, and yep. you did it in the last month. Technically weak, but it, uh, it, <laughs> yeah, because I, well, I, I guess I gotta well, expand price three weeks, but, but it, uh, well, because I, hopefully if we do this other one, so what I did was I challenged myself to take four salespeople, implement this strategy for each and every single one of them so that it couldn't be just one fluky deal, but work with four salespeople, take their deals, put this system together and then uh, prove that it could work amongst four guys. So the fourth presentation was done yesterday 
and then that'll take us up to I think around twelve point four. Uh, is when we finish out. And technically, because we had a couple little hiccups and changes um, to the way that that the presentation went, it'll probably turn out to be more like thirteen. But uh, just for a little upselling of things that we discovered because of cool questions that we asked. So I think that this is also crucial for those that are watching because to train somebody that is so sales driven, how to become an educational asset to your prospect, to speak to what their pains are, to talk to them about what keeps them up at night and not always me, my product or service, right? That blue ocean, red ocean, the 3% of the buyer's pyramid versus the 97% that aren't interested in your product or service. It can be extremely difficult for a sales rep to understand that, to grasp it because they're so used to just selling and pitching. Yeah. So to go to that educational place, I love that you with that sales background have been able to adapt it. So let's, let's dive into, can you talk, tell me a little bit about before this process, then what changed? So was the, the deck you, I, you shared with me that you ha, that you've changed the presentation of how you present to a, a prospect, how, what was it like before compared to where it is now? For, well, first things first, you have to change the mindset of the people that are going to be selling in my particular case. Now that could be your, you yourself, which obviously had to happen, but mm -hmm. also the people that are going to do the selling. So if you're a CEO or or a sales manager, you have to really start, you know, with the, I called it the punch in the gut sheet right off the start to them because we, you needed to, to, you know, give a pattern interrupt and be able to change how they think. And so for the guys that are currently selling, I mean, they've been programmed for years as to how it is, what models or what product or SKU or, or what have you, if you, no matter what you sell or service, you know what your products that you're offering, but you have to you have to look at what it is you're offering. You have to change that. And so, you know, the question that I went to, into each sales meeting was, as I said, I took the favorite things that I knew they were good at selling at. And I said, what if you're actually destroying that person's business? And in this case, it's farm equipment. But I said, what if you're destroying the, their farm by selling that particular model to them? And they all stop and stare at me like, what are you talking about? You just said the worst thing in the world. And I, and I said, yeah, but what if you are? Because if you're only programmed to only having that limiting mindset, um, what are the other opportunities that the business has that you need to, to uncover, educate mm -hmm. yourself, your customer, and be able to value stack things together to add even more value that's going to create an irresistible offer? Ooh, I love it. Okay, yeah. so that you sold me on the mindset shift. Yeah. So then where do we go from there? Yeah, so then really, so I, so I had to figure out, okay, so I started to show them things that uh, of a presentation, what I was working on. So I, I said to them, you know, what are the top five things that, you know, so the person we're selling to is a farmer or a farm manager or owner, and the people we're going to sell to are going to be large producers, like, you know, 12, 15,000 acre plus size farms, massive, mm -hmm. because these are ran like corporations. And those to me would be the most exciting. So what I did was, is I said, okay, let's get data on, you know, what are the top things? Because I, and in this particular case, I can't go to really Forbes or I can't go to Inc or I can't, the agriculture has, some challenges with the type of data. So what I did was I, I said, okay, we're going to create our own. We know that the things that we can get from the banks or we can get from the USDA or we can get from, you know, Canadian agriculture and all those things, but there's so much change happening, so much scarcity and challenges with, uh, you know, through the pandemic and, and just all kinds of things, but we need to be able to figure out. So what are those things? Because we need to create our own proof. And so mm -hmm. what we did is I used a product, um, a, a texting app, and I gave a whole bunch of producers a quick three questionnaire uh, thing of the top, so I could get five to 10 things that were a big problem for them, right? So okay. quickly did a texting campaign because then I could really start to sort out my dream 100 that way by then figuring out, okay, so who are my top influencers? Because the ones that, the way I worded the questions were, if you were giving your neighbors or anybody else around you advice, what are the top things that you would tell them are the challenges this year? That ultimately allowed me to figure out who my dream 100 was because then those are the people that obviously love to brag and shout out different statistics and different challenges, right? Okay. So then, then what I did was then I went back, those were going to be the people we were going to sell to. Now, the funny thing is they gave us all that advice, but all of those people also said they weren't buying anything, <laughs> <laughs> right? And so that's how that started off. But so then what I did is then I came up with a new, like punch in the gut sheet that basically talked about the things that, um, 
that farms were going to to face, right? So for us, the number one thing for any farm producer was going to be dealer support. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we just simply ask the question, does your current dealer today, like what is your support? And and what are those things? Do you want me to share my screen, Amanda? Yeah, sure. Yeah. So here, just if you could give me just know that while you're going through it, for those that see video, they'll be able to see it. And then there'll also be an audio version for the podcast. So some will see, some will just have to hear what you're talking about. I will be really good at explaining. So we started off with um so then we could go back to these farms right off the start and we could say, so what are the top five reasons your farm could lose revenue? Right. And they're like, well, what do you mean? You know? And so, um, we, you know, we're going to discover these solutions to combat that revenue. So dealer support. Um, so the company the in particular, this dealer is called Western tractor. Mm -hmm. So we came up with all of this information and got these quotes from our customers, um, that we were these dream 100 people. Right. So, yeah. So we came up with this and then having a thing in there to talk about, you know, well, having dealer support for your entire operation is imperative. We still haven't talked about anything about what we do. Then on the next page, then we do put in there, what are the things that Western Tractor does have, right? Mm -hmm. And so all of those things were a big piece. Um, you know, and then number two, uh, not staying with current, uh, with the latest, uh, it's not staying current with the latest technologies. Um, mm -hmm. So that you could be super efficient with things that are growing. And so, you know, getting people to figure out why would you invest in more growth on, on equipment and technology. Mm -hmm. um, so we talked about uh, some of the quick things on there and nobody really watched, looked at any of this, by the way, they, as they represented these, they only stared at this. Okay. Uh, at the pain, they stared yeah. at the pain. They didn't really care about the solutions. Yeah, okay. exactly. So people are either going to do something to either gain pleasure, or avoid pain. And really 95% of what you did today was avoid pain. Right? So then we talked about equipment optimization and operator training. We found out most people don't even understand how to fully use their equipment. These things are massively high technological advancements in the world, but they really, their operators barely had grade seven to nine education for most parts. And they, and they didn't even hardly sp speak English. So we found out there was a big problem there. So we could, you know, figure those, these things out um, for, for a training program. So it wasn't just about selling equipment. It was really about that part. So um, now in a big one, inflation, you know, we talked to customers about, you know, Florida had reported like last month that, you know, 9% inflation alone in one month. But inflation's going through the roof at record speeds, North America wide, Canada, US, or worldwide for that matter. And so one thing that's gonna happen is when you're financing two, three, four million dollar projects, um, if you take a four million dollar project right now and you go from the 0.9% interest that a lot of people have been paying, and you take them up to 3.9, there's a $240,000 opportunity that you gave a bank in money versus your own self, okay? Wow. Yeah. So not locking in historically low interest rates. So what we're saying is let's start off with an equipment purchase today and let's capture another five years of interest rates until the economy settles down. Okay. <laughs> so, and so then, uh, so we did that. We showed here wait, on these can I just, Wait, yeah. let me just pause while I'm laughing. I just love the use of market data, right? You use yeah. market data to truly quantify and qualify the pain and made it real, right? By citing, this is where we're, we're seeing it happen and then giving them a dollar amount to which they felt yeah. the pain, right? So it made it urgent, urgent to, because they, you've done the first punch, the second punch, the third punch, and by the fourth punch, they're like crippled over going, please give me some solution. Okay. Keep going. Totally. Well, and I, to even add into that one yesterday was kind of funny because these guys are growing their farm by double the size. And it's like literally a, like a, around a $90 million expansion. And mm -hmm. so what's funny is I said, so if I give you another $250,000, um, just on interest alone that you're not spending, what could you buy to speed up that expansion? Right. And they're like, Oh my gosh, cause their plywood's more money and all these things are more money. Right. So yeah, we put it into real. Um, five, taking on a chance that's not inspected and, and included warranty. So if these guys haven't been getting maintenance done by mechanics and shops, um, plus also warranty. Um, so one of the things I talked about quickly, warranty, what does that really mean for you on a, on a combine uh, thrashing machine is the engine goes out, it's $110,000 instantaneously, right? So, you know, you, having all of these things on the, on the equipment that you're purchasing is going to 
it's going to levelize your budget because right now, if your budget is already tight, how do you how do you budget taking say, say in yesterday's case seven combines? What if two engines did fail without warranty? Mm-hmm. There's a quarter million dollars plus all the downtime of not being able to combine at X amount of bushels per hour then equals this much money that could get rained on um, and lose that. So what I said to them is I said, if you're not sure about warranty and you're not sure, and if you're standing in front of a 50,000 bushel grain bin, just pretend you're standing there and you, and you feel the tear roll down your face because you know that you lost $4 a bushel because of a bad grade because you didn't get all the combining done quick enough because your equipment wasn't properly maintained and, and kept up to date. Um, you know, you have a $200,000 problem there, right there that you could have prevented. Wow. Right. Yeah. So, 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 and what you're doing here for everybody that's listening, what Troy is doing so brilliantly, again, I'm going to point it out is he's starting already to reset the buying criteria so that they will be looking for a warranty. He's not saying, Hey, this is what I sell and you need a warranty. He's educating them first that these are some of the solutions you need to look for when you're having these kinds of pains. So I love this already resetting the buying criteria without even having to mention your product. Okay. And if I could, I, I, you know, before I go into the next part, I want to talk about real quick about what it is that got this particular part going. Mm -hmm. I made this into a brochure like this. When I phoned up the customer, I said to him, I said, sir, um, I need to talk to you about your equipment this year. And he said, oh, Troy, you know, and they always say, and they always give you a thing that they, to, to block that idea. But I said, no, actually, I'm not talking about selling you anything. I just, I did a study um, that we've done. We've put in a, a lot of hours of work and I found five of the top reasons why your farm's going to have a massive uh, problem this year. Can I come out and, and can we get together and see you? Sure. Every yeah. time. So yeah. even what, so, and these particular people, each and every one of them, um, cause what is there? There's six clients. So all of them had told their sales per people, we don't have time till in a couple of weeks we could meet. Then I got changed the subject into this because now it's not a meeting. Now it's a meeting with a purpose and something that they urgently need to know. Then wow. we went from three weeks in some cases that the people said, one person said they were going to Mexico the next, uh, next, in the next few days, somehow we met with them in two days after that for this urgent meeting and did a deal. Right. So it people will put you off. So I'm just saying, create that, take that punch the gut thing and start off by, Hey, I'm going to verbally tell you that there's a big problem you need to learn about. And that's how we started that off. Then we, then this is what we did was we went there and, and started off with this part. Okay. I love um, in it. Those, yeah. And in, 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 the, in those meetings too, sorry to cut you off, in those meetings, we made sure that we invited every person that was going to be a decision maker that needed to learn. So I actually invited their kids that were like 14, 15 years old um, in these groups and said, Are, is there anybody going to be coming into that farm in the next five years? And they're like, well, yeah. And I said, could they hang out with us? So in, in a couple of people's cases, we did have other influential people and one spouse uh, to be there. So we included everybody because we felt this data was that important for them to know for wow, future. Wow, great, great. Yeah. yeah, so any questions so far? Yeah. Any questions? You guys can write them in the chat. We have some, some more of the core story boot campers that have joined in. Uh, if you have a question, go ahead and write it and then we'll keep going and I'll circle back on them, Troy. So go ahead. No worries. So yeah, we talked about our warranty and all those things. We gave them the answers. Um, so then it worked, right? So in this particular case, we did go through some specific things for different things on actual equipment. Okay. But then we went into what, what, what it is, is, you know, what to expect with this equipment. Um, so we have a quote here, upgrading to premium used, uh, seemed out of reach for our farm. So I, I made some of these up myself. Okay. So they seemed out of reach. Cause this was the answer is most people said, well, it's out of reach. These things are a lot of money. So once we looked at our maintenance, depreciation and downtime over five years, we realized this was an opportunity we needed to invest in. So I created the sense of urgency with credible testimonials that I can't get out really in the national world or international world, like from a big magazine, I created the information so that it was real life people that they could relate to. Mm. Right. So that's what I, I really did there. And um, so then uh, we talked about that. So then I gave them some examples of equipment at that time. And that's what got us in there. Okay. So then 
I'm going to use this one here. So this here was actually a Hatterian colony, which is kind of like a, a group of farmers that work together. Um, there isn't as many in the United States. There is some, but uh, more so in Canada. So we literally went and built this presentation for them. Um, and we put this all together. Here was the sales guys and there's me. Actually, this was a real picture I got of their crop, their field. This is the, their combine. Everything about it is theirs. This is their logo, right? Made sure it was completely familiar for them. And so, yeah, so we said when we got out there, you know, here's the opportunity. Um, and we started chunking it down into their language so that they could understand the interest rates and the technology and downtime cost and everything else. Okay. Wait, and wait. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm confused. And Jay was also asking. Um, yeah. uh, so did you show this entire presentation happened in person, right? You didn't call and then give them portions of it. So called them and met with them first to do a little bit and then got then their whole group together so that oh. I could show them this as a presentation. Sorry okay. about that guys. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So the first part was, is just to really just get them into that part and we sent that to them with an email, um, okay. knowing they were on the phone at the same time. Um, so we showed them that whole first part. Then okay. we drove to their facility and sat in their boardroom then to give them this. Okay. Okay. So now their interest is peaked because what does this really mean to me? Cause, and then that's what we did. So that's does that great. answer your question? Yes. So you started the conversation over the phone, uh, asking them, you know, the five critical things they need to learn or they lose profit. Then you gave yep. them the five things oh, uh, in a short meeting with one of the decision makers and said, I'll come to your facility to give you even more explanation. And so they booked for that. Exactly. Got it. This one was a little bit harder yesterday because we tried to do a lot in one, which was a little bit more uh, stressful. However, you cut out a bunch of the pages that you don't double up on so that it all becomes, so you can do the punch in the gut, um, talk about the things then as they relate to our study and mm -hmm. then get rid of all that other sales uh, stuff. Cause you don't need any of that because you have a totally different approach. Now, then you move into this here where I chunked it down and I went into then details for them. So they had machines that were already inspected, things like that. And I literally put down how much of their labor and different pieces. Right. And we literally went through and figured out what it's costing them to not do this. Okay. So that then that way I could, I could go through all of this stuff to a T of exactly how much money was costing them. Now, this looks a little bit primitive because I'm talking to people I needed to look in their language, not too flashy. There's no PowerPoints, things like that. It's just real numbers. Okay. For, for those that are just listening, um, it, it, Troy's just showing um, a Word doc that basically just says this many um, Sorry. Uh, people that work there. Uh, oh, so how many parts are needed for how many pieces of equipment you have, uh, how many hours needed for per person that works at your farm. And he's just calculating hourly uh, combines and, and putting simple numbers that get filled in, fill in the blank. So very simple, very simple sheet, as you said. Yeah, you could do this with any product. So if you don't make a choice, if you don't make a change, here's the cost that you're leaving out on the table. What I'm doing then is I'm saving you money, right? And so, yeah, for their biggest pain points, because then in my presentation, it's super easy because then I can go in, I can talk about the finance rate. I can talk about the warranty and minimizing those costs. I can talk about the dealer support, the technology. Um, I can add all of those things together to make sure that they are saving money. And then really we went on, you know, one thing was just talking about how much money does some of their losses and things like that in terms of grain production. If you lost simply two bushels an acre, here's all the monies and, th and things like that, that we were able to actually to do for you. So two bushels an acre actually turns out to be $24,000, which this is really crucial for every person that sells anything, right? When you say my service helps or product helps with saving you time or money, majority of people just say, yeah, it saves you time. But do you quantify it? Are you very specific about it? How much time does it save? If it's saving you an hour a day, how many hours in a year is that, right? So this is what Troy has done is he's calculated how much of that time spent or that money spent 
over in a year's time looks like a lot bigger number than just saying, you know, oh, it saves time. Oh, it saves uh, money. So I love this. This is brilliant. Yeah, because then they look at it and they're and they don't see it. So like, if if you have the pain and there you do have downtime or you are paying too much in interest or your guys don't know how to operate equipment or whatever. But I mean, you could do this with selling shoes, and you know, it, it doesn't matter. It's it, there's always a cost. There's always a pain. Wait, and you just got to dig it. Jay's in the chat. Jay Wilmax in the chat, and he's saying, "You've convinced me. I've been putting off buying a tractor for the ranch. I'll buy one this weekend." <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And yeah, no, and you'll look cooler in front of people too. Right. So yeah, it's uh, so yeah. Then we literally went through then and just started showing them the equipment that we wanted them to upgrade to. And, mm -hmm. uh, and like just literally just went through the features. Then we had a, a separate, uh, you know, quote with the actual numbers. Um, and then um, I'm just going to stop share here. because The quote doesn't yeah. really matter, but, but so the cool part was, so then the quote, here's what I did. So, and you'll love hearing this because nobody talks about this. So the quote and this part of this part, do not staple any of those pieces of paper together. Okay. So what I did is there's, there's one room, there's eight people plus my two guys. And so what I did is then I give them all a piece of paper and get them to agree to each and every single piece of paper. Okay. So it's yes, yes, yes. So all they feel is all those five points. Then they see the way that those numbers are going to work for them. Then we go through and make sure that the equipment and the solutions, we wait, also wait, add. Wait. You know, so great. you're saying that they actually initial or they say yes, yeah. like they actually write on every single page of your proposal. Yeah. Some people put a check mark and most people just put their initial. Okay? <laughs> okay. And there's a, there's a science behind this. And so what happens is, is now they've said yes. Like, well, in their case, I guess like 39 pages, right? <laughs> so you go through each one so that they get, uh, so that they do it. So they've said yes, 39 times. And all you've done is shown them how they're going to get there. And, oh and then, uh, and they've said, yes, well, so we've shown them everything from the pain to the solution to, and, and we walk them through how we're going to do it and literally explain the whole thing from start to finish. So then we start talking already in future pace. Okay, guys, on Monday, we're going to bring out the finance contracts. This is what it's going to work out to. And this is how we're going to do this. Right. And we get them to initial everything. And we, I, I started doing this, uh, as well. And, uh, and so when you go through the quote, now the, the money part is on the last page. But they have no clue anymore at that point because they've just said yes and they're just like okay let's go right it's just like what jay said right so then uh so then if you do that do never staple a quote because what happens is the person goes to the page sees the price and now has to somehow avoid pain so they're burning like twenty thousand calories in their brain trying to figure out how to say no and get out of this problem because it's a lot of money right so you you have to you have to be able to figure out that part so you got to get enough yeses so now that they're already convincing themselves, okay, so now what do I do next? Mm. Then, and then they, they sign off on it. But, you know, I, I think like, so as in that, that quote though, so we took all the pieces of the pain and we're positioning this in our verbal conversation as these are the things that are going to happen. And we pre-answer all the questions that all of their neighbors and influencers have already told them. Mm. So as you're out there texting and you're telling more and more people all of this verbiage within your company, you start to create your own marketplace because now you're, everybody is constantly talking about what are the five things that are going to kill a farm this year. And this is becoming the theme. That's a better, that's a better title. You just said it. I would change it to the five things that are killing a farm this year. We'll do it. We'll change it for the that next one. Great. Yeah. So or think about it. So, them, see which one's so well, it, well, and as you're asking, and as you're telling your, your the secretaries or the, or the the cleaning staff or the, everybody in your company, as you're telling them this, and you start publishing this on your social medias and everything else, now you're actually creating your own market data for your Dream 100 people that are influencing even more and more people now, right? Because now you can go back and tell the people that you interviewed or that you got the information from of the five main pain points. Here's what this study actually uncovered. Here were the top five. Right. So now they actually start telling everybody this. Well, now you're in there solving the problem. The best part is the competition has no idea you're doing this yet because it's happening that fast. Yeah. I right? love it. Yeah. Jay's question was how are you incorporating it with the dream 100? So this kind of answers that, that you started asking them, what are their biggest pains? Then you went and did research to find the solutions to their biggest pains, right? Did the study. Uh, I love well, that. Jay, and if you're in trucking, well, I'll use farming though. I go and ask all your farm customers that you're thinking about who are the I already know that know who are the people they look up to the most and ask people, who do you follow on Twitter the most? 
right? Because there's your dream 100 now. Now you know the influencer that they're watching. Well, I wonder if his people are on Twitter. You're on mute, Jay. We're on Yeah, wherever. that is brilliant. That is absolutely brilliant. Who are the people you follow on Twitter the most? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, my throat was dry. Uh, yeah, 100%. You find out who the Dream 100 are from the people that are already following them. Yeah, get them to tell you who the list is. <laughs> and then go work with those people. And I love that you said texting as well. Uh, texts... 95% of texts are opened within the first three minutes of them being sent. And here we are trying to do email. Here we are trying to do ads. Text is amazing. So I thought I found that was really fascinating as well. Wow. This has been so magnificent. Does anybody else have more questions for Troy before we uh, sign off? I promised it would be short, but man, that was so great. I, I got, and I want to add one more piece, if I may, um, yeah. because I think it's important. So when you're value stacking all those five things together, somehow figure out how you're already going to be preceding, I call them perennial seeds, of things to probe on in the next few years so that those problems keep sticking with them. That keeps you as the person solving the problem um, on target uh, mm -hmm. for uh, that you're accomplishing what you said but also so that you re-ask them three to five years from now. So if they're on a cycle of buying every three years, make sure that in two years you're re-asking those questions if there's still a problem, but find the things to keep re-energizing which seeds you're putting out there so that they already know today that you're going to be asking in two years about this part. Are you up to date with technology? Where are your interest rates? Right. And keep asking all these things to bring that up because now you just stay as a trusted advisor. Oh, it's great. Yeah. So brilliant. So you went from those that weren't interested, thought they weren't interested or definitely not interested. You hooked them with the stadium pitch basically, right. And mm -hmm. giving them the five biggest trends, uh, educated them at first with a first meeting, then got all the decisions makers together, gave them solutions on an entirety of their business rather than just the one piece that you saw quantified it and qualitatively showed them numbers to identify the, the amount of money that they were losing and, and then had them say yes 39 times in your yeah. proposal so that they were in such an agreeing mode that it was hard to even deny uh, you, basically. Yeah. Well, t and take a look at how many squirrel brain people you talk, you talk to. I'm one of them. If I go to this page on the numbers and I'm like, I don't even hear the rest of it because I either accept it or I don't. So if I spend most of my time saying yes, and now it's, here's the price, then, then let's move forward. Okay. Leslie's saying genius, Troy, that was genius. Um, Sorry, I should turn that on. Uh, it's okay. Um, so your cold calling script, can you talk a little bit more about that? They're just asking. Okay. Yeah. Get the, build the script off the Dream 100 people, find out what they know are the biggest problems, um, build that, uh, that, uh, that, that I call it the punch in the gut sheet, and, uh, but come up with, phone up a person and say, hey, you know what, Amanda, hey, my name is Troy, and guess what, I know that your, your business, here's something that you are going to want to hear. I came up with a study um, where there's five reasons why your business and, and your competition are going to face failure. You know, come up with something and just say, you know what, I think enough of your company already that I think it's something that you should actually be hearing uh, because I'm going to be presenting it to people in your competition. And I know that you're somebody that stands out. Right. Okay. Now I really know that you watch the Chet Holmes Institute. You, you followed it to a T. That's so great. Yeah. And here you are, right? Just a week, uh, a week after deploying this two weeks, three weeks, yeah. you're such a great demonstration. Just you alone made me say, Oh my gosh, I charged too little for the core story boot camp. Yeah. <laughs> it was no, it's in, well, it's incredible because like, as you, as you do this and I, and honestly, I, I would talk about it with anybody um, that on your business, because it's really not that hard because you have to go back to really your core story. What is it, the problem you're solving and make it about them? Yeah. I love it. Yeah. And you, you're such a great demonstration of dream 100 and we have the dream 100 boot camp coming soon. So thank you so much, Troy. It's been such a pleasure. Yeah. I'm so glad we had everyone else hop on as well. I'm sure they were all grateful as well. And uh, until next time. You betcha. Thank you. Thank you.
Would you like to double the size of your company in the next 12 months flat? Take 30 seconds to answer our quiz on the ultimate sales machine on what's holding you back from growth. The reason is, is because 95% of businesses will never make it to a million in annual sales. Of that, 0.08% of those will reach 5 million. Of that, 1.5% will ever reach 10 million and 0.004% will ever reach 100 million and beyond. See, in most cases, it's not about your product or service. It is the skills it takes to grow your business. Based on the ultimate sales machine written by my father, Chet Holmes, voted in the top 10 most recommended marketing and sales books of all time. We can help you get there. All it takes is focusing on one skill area that can double your sales if you have the pig-headed discipline and determination to do so. So be pig-headed. Go ahead and answer those five questions on our survey to understand how you can create your ultimate sales machine. Answer these five questions at how to double sales.com. Subscribe for more videos. Claim your free chapter four of the ultimate sales machine. This chapter helps you get nine times more impact from every move you make. Visit ultimate sales This has been the CEO mastery podcast brought to you by the ultimate sales machine.